Uh, I, I think we have to talk about, we have to ask what is a corporation, and we also have to ask what is the United States of America, because they, they're very much inter interwoven from the beginning. Um, as far as what is a corporation, a corporation is a, a legal fiction, it's a creation of law, it's, it's something very intangible, although it's also property. Um, and it has many purposes, but one of the most important purposes is to enable the humans who run the corporation and the humans who profit from the corporation to essentially not be responsible for the results of their actions. It's a shield. In law, we talk about the corporate shield. And in order to get to some of the individuals who make the decisions, uh, we talk about piercing the corporate shield, which is exceedingly difficult to do because we have hundreds of years of history. Uh, I mean, the first corporations were church corporations back in the 12, 12th and 1300s. So we have, you know, a thousand years of history of, the corporate, of this legal entity serving, serving as a shield uh, to protect the people who run it and also to replicate it across generations. Because one of the reasons the churches set up the corporations in the first place was to pass church property on down across generations. To, to perpetuate the entity. So the people come and go. The entity exists forever and ever. And today in this country, uh, and for the last hundred years or so, corporations are chartered. They're chartered by our states, which is an important piece of information. But they're chartered in perpetuity, forever. Unless the state or the people, you know, the governing entity, so-called, does something intentional about it. So then the second question asks, well, what is the United States of America? Well, that's also a long story. But if we go back to the beginning, to the, to the founding of this country um, after the revolution, um, we, you know, we, we, we sort of all know, but sometimes we don't really scrutinize and, and ask what it means, that even though the, the Constitution begins, we the people of the, of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union and do all the great things, only about 20% of the human beings who lived in the 13 states were regarded under law as people with rights. So women, African Americans, indentured servants, native people, white men without property, native people, uh, not to mention the rivers and the trees and the raccoons and the buffalo, they had no rights. And essentially they were property. So that when the Constitutional Convention took place um, in Philadelphia, uh, about 10 years after the Declaration of Independence, you had a small handful of people who were people just coming together to, to create the nation's plan of governance. Right? And they were essentially southern slave masters and northern men of property. There weren't any tailors there. There weren't any shoemakers. There weren't any housewives. There weren't any sailors. There weren't, weren't, any, weren't any native people. There certainly weren't any elk and, and trees represented. So they had a very, you know, they looked around and said, we're, the, we're 20 percent, we represent 20 percent of the people in this country, in, in this new country. And they were very clear that they needed to write a plan of governance um, that would enable a minority to govern in perpetuity. This plan of governance, this is a document for a global empire, a global commercial empire. So you had people, you know, and this is not what we fought in the revolution for, this is not what we had envisioned and imagined, and so you had people at that time, you know, not looking back, saying, this is, this is not what we want. This is not a, 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 a really about consent of the governed, and, and, and it's way too, a, too, a, too much of a plan for a global commercial empire. 